Stockport County Live, after a week off, unplanned, we're back. We're back in business and looking sharp. Boys, how are we doing? Back, oh, back, to, back to the basics, mate. Back to basics. Terrible trio. The terrible trio. How are we? It's been a while. It's been a while. It has been a while. It feels like it's been it longer, longer than two weeks. weeks. It was a lot longer than two weeks. I don't think that bank holiday helps. You might have alcohol drank over that bank holiday. I think... Um, <laughs> I feel like I don't even want to date is most of the time now from, from that. I'm getting too old. I can't do it anymore. I feel like uh, I'm trying to relive them county days where I could do it five days a week. Can't, can't, play, two, can't play two games in a week, can you, Nico, anymore? Although, although um, I am uh, bagging goals for fun for the, for the veterans, for farmer veterans. I'm on 14, 14 goals in, in five games now, uh, or six, five, and I've been playing centre half the last four games. So, yeah, so I think Ogan needs to, to, to step up more for me. <laughs> that's what, that's I, do what take, I do take free kicks, penalties and everything else. <laughs> Is it, you know what? It's his ball as well. He brings the ball. <laughs> <laughs> you're not playing. <laughs> no, you're not playing. Well, listen, since we last spoke, another round of victories for County and... No goals conceded. I mean, Dicko, you know exactly what it's like to be playing in a team, a Stockport County team that wins and doesn't concede. I mean, those guys are walking on air at the minute. It's it's, it's one of them things where the, the defence can count on the strikers scoring goals. You know, look, at the, he was scoring four goals a game. Um, and it works both ways now because the... Obviously, the, the, the strikers know that the, the defence is going to keep clean sheets. And when you've got that trust between the front and the back, you know, it, it gels nicely. And for me, we went for a, obviously, we had that, that, that dry spell where we couldn't score. And now, not only are we scoring goals, but they're coming from all over the pitch. You know, uh, a lot of players are chipping in for the goals. And that's a that's a massive thing for, the, for a run-up to, to where we are in the league. You know, albeit whether we end up nicking the league towards like, you know, the last game of the season, which would be an absolutely amazing amazing achievement um but going into a playoff playoff situation on, on, a, on a run and form like we are it's you know you couldn't ask for any more from the lads yeah well i mean we're, we're we're certainly well we're not out of the race do you know there'll be a number of teams now that can't catch talkie that mathematically impossible we're yeah. not one of them so yeah. while that's still there while that chance is still there i guess matty we've got to go for it yeah i mean all we can do is take care of our games every saturday and midweek that's all we can do and we've done that in some fine style lately we've been absolutely you know walking on the clouds the way we've played he must be playing with ultimate confidence I mean there's, there's nothing like Liam says there it's one thing banging him in winning 3-2 3-1 2-1 but banging him in and not conceding I mean he can't ask for more as a manager he can't ask for more all, all the goals all the goals like the variety of goals you've got the goal poaching goals, you've got the, you know, the, the, the world is from outside the box. They're coming from all over the pitch. And like you say, we're not, we're not just relying on one player or two players. You know, obviously, Rooney's bagging, Reedy's bagging, um, Manzi's bagging. All the, all the boys, you know, they're all chipping in. And that's that must be a massive confidence boost from, from all over the pitch and the, and the management and the fans. Of course. Well, I mean, even Ryan Crowsdale got on the score sheet. Yeah, you know? true. Even Crowley bagged. <laughs> One person who um, who doesn't have a single problem finding the back of the net. Let's bring him in. Certainly not in recent weeks and months. By Alex Reed. Alex, the gold machine. County Live. How are uh, you First like you had you earlier in the season, you were this yeah. new boy. Kind of. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how it's. Uh, you know. Let's see how this first season goes. We're now coming towards the end of that first season. And I think, I mean, talk about fans' favourites. Uh, even with no fans in the stadium, everybody is Team Alex. You're scoring the goals. You've got the new contract. It's It must have been exactly what you would have wanted. Yeah, I mean, it's been a bit of a whirlwind season without actually having to, you know, obviously we've not met the fans, not played, apart from Bromley away, we've not played with any fans. So it's been a mental season, really. And, you know, I just sort of sat down in the summer and I just sort of set some targets for myself, just sort of said, well, where would I want to play? What level do I want to play at? How many goals do I want to get? And, you know, thankfully for me, it's been one of them seasons where everything's just 
everything's just gone for me really and everything's gone right and you know I've worked hard and it's just sort of um good season I just want to touch on one thing. You know, earlier on, early on in the season, when we obviously we had last had you on, yeah, and you spoke about wanting to find a home, wanting to find mm. a team where it's, it's a home, even mm. though you know, because I think a, ma a massive part of that is the fans. Even though we haven't had the fans in the in the stadium, do you feel like you, you're at that point, or you're getting more towards that point where? Yeah, I think uh, I think when obviously I first arrived at Stockport, I knew how big the club was and this and that and I knew a couple of the lads briefly from that had played at the club and they sort of said you know you, you won't realise obviously until you're sort of in it and you've been here ages that or well, you've been here for, a, for throughout the season like how big and how good the club is and as the season's gone on it's just sort of it's mental really like it, it does feel like home I've been here what when you put it into perspective I've been here since July but I just feel comfortable around the place, you know, the fan base, the teams, the lads, and it's. I couldn't have asked for any more. I couldn't ask for a better season so far. But you know, it's 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 been crazy, really. You, you'll probably agree when 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 you feel settled at a club, that's when you play your your best football, and it just goes to show. Obviously, you're scoring goals, you're creating chances and opportunities. Um, you must you must be relishing off the you know what the excited every game. Looking at the fixtures, thinking I can't wait to play again. I can't wait to play again. When you're scoring goals, you just want you want the games to come thick and fast, don't you? Mm, and I, I said to, um, I was even saying to Minion or or Ash Palmer the other day. I said, you know, this is it's crazy because you know on paper I've had a lot of clubs and a lot of loan spells and this and that. But I said it's probably the the first time since I've left Russell when I was what 21 that I've played 20 games in a season and that I've played. You know what? I've, I've probably started about 35 games this season, and it's like, you know, I always sort of had that belief in myself that you know, given a chance somewhere, a proper chance, that I could score goals and do well. And you know, I'm just forever grateful to the club and and for, for them giving me a chance to just sort of play and go and play my football and enjoy it. And do like you know I said, what? as a striker, Alex. when you when, when you're playing, it's just sort of like you're in that rhythm. You were saying there, Alex, at the start. Um... It's been a season where everything's gone for you, but you are, there has been times where you've not started. And you come mm. off the bench and you've done the business. That mm. that must be even more rewarding than having it handed to you on a plate sort of thing. Mm, yeah, definitely. And I sort of, you know, I was under no illusion when I come here that I was I was on a one-year deal and I sort of knew that I was on sort of, you know, this is your chance. If it goes for you, it goes for you. If it doesn't, then, pff, do you know what I mean? That's it. So... I, I was sort of at the mindset at the start of the season that, right, I'm not going to be probably starting games, so I'm going to have to try and make an impact off the bench. And I just sort of said to myself, you know, the more that I do this and the longer that it goes on that I keep coming off the bench, scoring goals, scoring winners, then eventually I'll get myself in that starting eleven. And then I think from, <clears throat> from maybe the Chesterfield game away up until maybe... The start of last month, I didn't come out of the team once. And it was, it, it, you know, I just sort of always had that mindset that, you know, even if I am on the bench, then, yeah, you're disappointed and I'm the worst for it in terms of, like, being on the bench, I'll be a bit like... But once you've sort of, you know, got over it, you sort of think, right, well, I'm going to have to come in off the bench and make an impact. Yeah. How, how, much, how much pressure is on you? Sorry, Chris. How, how much pressure is on you when you, when you do only sign a one-year contract at a club? Um, do you feel like you've, you've got a, you've got a, a short space a space a period of time to impress everyone, and you've got you've got to make it perfect and and mm, I sort of, of I thought I sort of come here with a plan. Really, I mean, obviously, ideally, I would have liked to have had a longer contract from the start, but I sort of think it's worked, it's it's played into my favour because you have that pressure when you're playing, and you bring that with you that you think you know what this is it now, you've got a year here, you can get your head down, work as hard as you can, try and score as many goals as you can, and then from there, you know, just do as well as you can. And and, and it sort of, it's helped me in a way, not, 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 not that it was a monkey on my back, but it's just sort of like, it's that good pressure that you carry with yourself, that, I'm, you know what, I'm on a year here, I've got to make this work, I've got to do as well as I can. And there's sometimes where you can get a little bit complacent if I was just given a three-year 
deal up front because I could have just thought, well, pff, bit of, bit of breathing space, bit of relaxing time, and you yeah. know, you can see, you can see where the club's going. I just sort of wanted to be on the journey with the club and help them get along the way. So, you know, for me, I wanted to be here longer than, than a year and thankfully I extended my contract. What I, was, what I was going to ask, Alex, I mean, it makes sense what you're saying there. And having worked with County over the last few years and a number of different players um, on, all, on all different lengths of contracts, one years and two years and, and even three, um, that conversation comes up a lot. But what I wanted to ask you was, for you, it's been a season of change. And that can that can bring out the best in some players, but sometimes it, you know it, it can work negatively and against them. And I'm sure Dicko or Matty can tell me a hundred stories either side of that kind of fence. But with the change in manager came the change in personnel. You know, you were playing up with Richie Bennett, and then it was more like you know Harry Cardwell came in, Elliot Newby came in, and Paddy more recently Paddy Madden came on board. And you know we have all these these different players to play around you and alongside you and off you and everything else. But you don't seem to have let that affect your game. You know, you, you've, you, you've, you, you've still scored goals. You've still created opportunities. You've still been that constant thorn in the side. And like you say, the last month, you've still been in every game. You've been involved in every team selection. What's that been like for you, having to get used to different players and, and different styles and tactics and everything else? Um. You know, I think a lot of the times it's it's sort of testament to how close we are as a group, really. And I think that it's such a good group that no matter who's coming in the team, who's coming out the team, that they've been able to adapt quick and I've been able to adapt to them, really. Just, just from some little things like, you know, being friends off the pitch or mixing with people off the pitch quickly, it makes it a lot easier as a striker that, you know, I can talk to Paddy, I can talk to... Elliot, I can talk to Runes if I'm playing off him. I had a good, I, you know, I've got a good, good relationship with Benno. So I think on the pitch, it sort of translates and makes it easier that, that you know, off the pitch, it's a good group and you, you, you get on with each other and it just makes it easy, really. Now you know the, now you know the players a bit more. Um, you can maybe give us a bit more goss on what it's like back there. You know who 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 are the ones who are the ones that the who are the who are the jokers and who are the ones that are, that, that maybe not so much. Um, the jokers of the group. If he's going to go jokers of the group, I'd probably put Minion in there. Definitely, massive character, tiniest man alive, but massive character. Uh, you got you got Runes. Is a you know big 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 joker in the group. Maka, myself. Um, who else sort of put up there? There's, 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 honestly, there's, there's, there's like, there's a, such a big group of us that there's like, everyone has to take their own fair share of banter. And don't get me wrong, like, I give out a lot of banter. So when it's my time to take banter, I'll probably take it worse than anybody else. But <laughs> it's, it's, it's good. Like, it's, it's healthy at the end of the day. But I, I, I think you've got to have that in a group. You can't have a group that's just 100% serious all the time and this and that. And I think that's what makes football so, so fun like it's not like a normal working environment where you can go where you know sometimes i'm telling my mom stuff and she's like jesus you know if that was if that was at work we'd, you'd 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 be you'd be on a flipping tribunal and this and that yeah, but it's, yeah. that's, that's that's the rare thing about football that it's it's not like a working environment i did have um i did have uh, paddy madden on the post-match interview a couple of weeks ago and he came out with john rooney yeah and, yeah and john and john was giving it the Ask him about why he's wearing them jeans and ask him about why he's got <laughs> that top on and all that. You do kind of get this, like, I don't know, it would have been easy to say, maybe lazy earlier in the season, or oh, how are you all going to gel and, and who's initially talking on with who. But now you do get this, like, certainly in the, the brief times I'm around the, the squad on match days and things, you do get this feeling of togetherness and that you're all in it now. You, you are mm. just a, a group of mates. Mm. It, is, it is honestly... Um... A great group of lads at the end of the day and you know i could i could easily have a night out with nearly everyone in the team do you know what i mean i don't think there's anyone i can think of that i think well wouldn't want to have a night out of them do you know it's it's that type of group where it's like there's there's people where you know if i was getting married tomorrow i'd invite people there so it's lucky and i think that's 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 helpful as well especially when you're going for something and you're you're, you're looking to achieve something that you, you find actual mates in football and I think a lot of the times there's there's a lot of people in football 
that are just teammates, but it's good to, to sort of look in the dressing room and say, you know what, I could consider that these like my mates, my actual mates. Yeah. I guess you guys have had that experience throughout throughout your careers. I'm guessing that 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 yeah, definitely. Resonates. For me, I feel like I've been at clubs where you have your, your groups of people, and you know when things aren't going going well, there's bickering going on and stuff. But when you got that togetherness, obviously, the, 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 when I was at County, we had that togetherness, and for such a young group of players. Um, we just all gelled and it was like in the change rooms, everyone was up singing and dancing before a game, nights out. Obviously, the boys haven't been able to do these team bonding sessions, really, have you? With, uh, I suppose, with the, you know, going out for food, drinks, you can't do it. So it's it's probably brought more together because they're having to do those things in the change rooms and try and get close to the change rooms and, and, yeah. and get keep that togetherness. It's easy for everyone to just go out for a beer but when you're with each other day in day out and and you, you're still performing to the to the way you're all performing i think it's a, a credit to yourselves i yeah. think i think personally i think it, it correlates with success as well i feel like the squad that you were in liam had a real real togetherness that you don't see very often i think that your success in the playoffs played a big part in that as i was coming into that squad as an 18 year old I'm almost like the new face, and then the lads with me are like new faces, and it's sort of a blend of two different squads. Yeah, lads getting older. Two different, like two different eras, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you had it, you had it properly. It doesn't come around too often, but I feel like you've got a real chance of it, Alex, as well. Because yeah, if you make a success of this year, I mean, you've, we've already made a success this year. But if we go up, you're going to go up. You're going to make a little bit of history with those lads, and you're going to play a big part in in their career. They're playing a big part in your career, and when mm -hmm. it's all said and done they'll be lads, you know, that's an experience you've got in common with those other lads. So I feel like success plays a big part in that um, in that cohesion that you have, you know, as what, a, what, a with team, one, the teammates. One thing for me is what, what you don't realise at the time is how much of an impact you have on other people's lives. Like, you're, 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 you're going through something now and, you know, you've... You, the team that you're playing in now as as is playing fantastic and it's for the probably for the first time in a long time the county fans have got something to cheer about and, uh, and the excitement back and it's only when you you get further on in your career and you look back and people talk about things that you know that was that season and you this that that season and you think jesus christ you know what it's like a you become a part of the, the sort of county history and i feel yeah. like you, yourself uh, and, and a lot of the players that are there are you know, we're heading towards that massively, and for, mm. for me, I feel like it's just going to go get better and better for you for, for, the, for the squad. I, I really hope you do it because I really, really hope we do it as a squad. But I, I hope for people like yourself because you're young, you're a young player, and to do something like that, you know, you'll have all of the country watching you, and to, mm. be, to be a part of it, it honestly, when it's all done, said and done, that is, I mean, Liam, Liam's lived it like that, that is a that is something special. Not any, not everyone gets to do that. Yeah, and I think some from when like I've spoke to say Kino or Minion, and they're like, look, really, honestly, like we got promoted, they got promoted from uh, the National League North to to this league that we're in now, and they said honestly, they were showing me like the videos on on their Instagram, and there was like you'd, you'd think it's Man City had been promoted, yeah. the amount of people that showed up, and like this and that. He says you have no idea, like how he says it's, it's weird because you've never actually played a game in the stadium for the home fans he says you've got no idea like how <laughs> um how much like i've honestly i've been I've, I've moved to manchester now i've been walking around town and i've had people like oh, can i have a, can I have a photo with you and you're almost like you, you don't realize like how how big um the fan base is the fan base is you know what yeah. i mean at the time i was with a bird so it did, did did, did bits for me really, but you know I'm, I'm walking around having having selfies and stuff. But yeah, honestly, you, you, you think to yourself like, oh, Stockport County, this and that, but it, it's massive. It's massive. We was we was um, we went for food the other day, and um, there was Stockport County fans. At, um, did you know Oast House in in uh, yeah. Manchester? Yeah. There was someone. Someone's just <laughs> someone's just said out of nowhere, "Is that?" Is that Sam Minion's bald head I see? And then like we both turned round and they were like singing songs and this and that and like the whole of Oast House is turning around thinking, what that but it's 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 crazy, honestly. And I've I've just had like a little tiny snippet of it. And you guys would will know 
more than me 10 times over and Minion will know more than me, but it's, 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 it's special what we're doing now and it's just, you know, long may it continue. Is that the first time, sorry to jump in, is that, is that the first time anyone's ever stopped you and asked you for like a picture or, or anything like that? Yeah, on that, on that level, like I've had, you know, you get Instagram messages and Twitter and this and that, but for someone to like physically stop, I think I've maybe been stopped about three or four times in Manchester and say, you know, can I have a selfie with you? And it's like, well, yeah, you know what I mean? It's 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 crazy, really. The only time anyone's ever stopped me and gone, are you Chris Ridgway? I'm going, yeah. They've gone, you owe me a tenner. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, um, listen, it, like, like Matty says, it, it's, I guess it's something for you guys to get used to. I mean, especially if this season ends the way it, it potentially could do, um, you know, ask ask any of the guys. Like you say, you know, they talk about going up from the north. Imagine being part of the team that go back into the football league. Just just quickly, Alex, before I'm conscious of keeping you for too long, I just want to speak to you about the new contract and when all that came around. I'm guessing, uh, well, from as a fan, that I'd like to say, I bet it was the easiest decision in the world for you to make. But but was it? Like, how, how did that conversation go? Um, if it was it was it was a little bit of a lengthy uh, process in terms of you know we we discussed it and talked about it for a while and this and that but you know credit to to Simon Wilson and 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 people like that he 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 was sort of on the same page as me and he just sort of said you know looking at your career and stuff like that I don't think you sort of have found any place that's at home you know since maybe Russia and he said you know look at Look at what you've done and what you can achieve, given a chance. You know we've we've sort of give you a chance, and and you know it's a club that's looking to go in one direction. You know we we feel like eventually we will get there because of the fan base, because of you know the great chairman and the backing that we've got, and you know everything we've got, the facilities, and you know I just sort of sat down and thought to myself, you know I'm, I'm 25 now, I've never really since Russia Olympic been at a club for longer than two seasons and I've definitely never played you know more than 30 games and I just sort of like what I said to you when I first met you on that podcast I, I was after at home and I feel like I've, I've found it here so you know it I'm, I, it wasn't really a difficult decision because you know I love Manchester I'm loving Stockport and you know I just thought us you can see you know anyone can see from the outside looking in the direction that the club's going in and you know it, it made perfect sense really to me to just sort of extend my stay and just sort of find a home and then you know look to progress with this team well it's i'm, I'm really glad that you found stockwell county as a home because Definitely. fans as you already know um have welcomed you with open arms and i'm looking forward to seeing what happens over the next few seasons, and, and in particular over the next in, in the football league? Yeah, exactly. Football league, crazy. Top guy reading. Top guy reading. Well, listen, we'll let you crack on, Reedy. Thank you very much for joining us again tonight. Yeah. All the very best for the remaining few games. I'm sure we'll catch up at one or two with them, and yeah. hopefully we're we'll hosting celebration, uh, toasting promotion in the not too distant future. Yep. Yeah. All right then, guys. Very easy the goal machine. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Really all the best, mate. See ya. Thank you. What a guy. What a guy. You know what? I, I thought that from the first from the first time we uh, we had him on here. Um honest and open about his, his career, about actually wanting to, to to find a club and call it a home. It's not easy to do when you especially when you're a striker, you, you move from club to club um when you're in the lower leagues. It's hard to to, to establish uh, a home, a base. It looks like he's done that for me. He's uh, he's at the ground running. It's not always been. I mean, he, he said something before. He said, um, you know, it's it's all kind of landed good for him. He, he, don't get it twisted. He, he's worked hard to be where he is now, and you know, as, as the rest of the team have, you don't just you don't just land in your lap being third in the league, uh, pushing for promotion, pushing for for, for, for the top spot still. That that doesn't that, that comes with a lot of hard work and a you know and a lot of hours. So uh, for me, I feel like he's he's deserve, he, he deserves to be where he is now. He's scoring goals. He's, he's been a, an absolute asset for us this season. 
I think it's nice that he that he referenced that first podcast because I know I, I've spoken to him a few times at games and things, and I know that you know I know that he remembers joining the club and he he remembers you know everything that was going on at the time, and it's it was obviously a big move for him, and he he remembers it fondly. But I remember the comments that we were getting to go to that interview where people were saying what a nice lad he seems like and everything else, and I guess. Again, you guys will know better than I will. When you're coming to a club with such a big fan base, winning the fans over is kind of key because if the fans think you're a bit of a whatever and they're not having you, then you're, you're up against it, really. Yeah. But the fact that he comes on, he speaks openly, he speaks honestly, and he does the business on the pitch, and he just seems like a decent fella. Yeah, definitely. Basically, if, if you could model a footballer, that's it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. He's, 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 he seems honest, genuine, and he knows what he wants, and, and he's not he's not afraid to work hard for it. What's great about him as well is he's twenty five, like you say, so plenty of room for progression. You know, yeah. he's not he's not in his peak yet. He's not on the decline. He's he's on the up, and that's that's exciting for him as a player, but it's exciting for for the club because they've just they've just secured his you know his services. So all all things good. Now listen, let, before we before we uh, before we cut things short tonight, I think we might have a bit of a short show tonight because I don't know if it's coming across the airways, but my internet here is, is shocking. Um, let's talk about the the unbeaten run of games and the goals <coughs> conceded or rather lack of. Dicko, are you looking over your shoulder at this, thinking maybe the record is under threat here? No, no. I mean, even even if it is, I, I'm more than happy to. To, uh, to to lose that record if it, if it means we're gonna we're gonna push on and get promoted, uh, don't break the record if you're not gonna get promoted though. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean you, you don't look at records when you're playing. You you want every game. I know it's a bit of a cliche. Every game, the next game is the most important. Um, but it's nice to have something to you know look over your shoulder at. And, oh, you know what? We're doing all right. Um, getting compared to things like that. Um, I mean, when, I, when we when we broke that record, we we I'd say probably the last two games it really got spoke about. Up until the last two games, oh, you know, we're gonna if we win today, if we win on Saturday, we're gonna we're gonna draw with that record. Oh, we, we, we won a clean sheet, and then it's oh well, it's, but that we didn't play thinking right. We need to keep a clean sheet. You want to win every game. That's yeah. a bonus. That's nothing but a bonus. So I wouldn't I wouldn't see them as concentrating too much on that. When they've got such a big goal in front of them and that they've worked out so hard all season for. But by the way, how long has this season been? <laughs> Tell me about it, mate. It's been it's been too long. I just want to make sure my maths are correct here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen games unbeaten now. Is that is that is league winning form. It okay. Is. It is. Maybe the league is slightly out of grasp. But that is league winning for. I think the most impressive thing as well is the clean sheets. I mean, it's, teams can win. They can win 3 2, 4 3, 5 2, 5 1, 4 1. You're keeping clean sheets. It's so, to, to, to a football purist, it's so much more. It tells you so much more of a story. Uh, it tells you that they're all firing in the right direction. You know, they're not, they're not nicking late goals. They're not coming from behind. It's just pure domination and control. Yeah. That's what it is in, in the first half and the second half. And and we all know. Look at Leicester City, for example. What happens when momentum gets behind you? You know, I I, I guarantee 100 percent there'll be other parts of the country down south who are not in with the chance who will be rooting for County because County have sadly slipped away from where they should be. They'll be and, and they'll be right behind them. You get that momentum; it's dangerous, dangerous yeah. going forward. Uh, well, listen, guys. I think I think we've had a good half hour. And the sun, the sun shining. At least it is where I am. I hope it is uh, with you guys. Before I ask, ask a silly question. Have you been able to enjoy any decent weather? Maybe get out and have a beer at any point. Uh, we had a bit last week, didn't we? Got, yeah. got burnt keys last last week. This week's been horrendous, though. Had a couple, a couple of barbecues. <laughs> I've got to say, I've got to say, this is not a name drop because I was in the hotel all last week. I'm actually taking for granted it was good weather. I didn't go outside for about four days. <laughs> so when you say it's been horrendous, you, you, mate, you can't you can name drop. I, I want to hear it. You drop the names, Paul. Say that again. You drop them names, mate. I'll pick them back up for you. I want to hear it. I will. 
Uh, for any boxing fans, uh, I'll just direct you to social media and you can see the names on there. <laughs> it was a pretty good week. It was a pretty good week. But um, well, listen, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you boys run on. Uh, hopefully, we'll have better internet signal soon. What I what I want to get working on is uh, this live podcast in a in a beer garden. Yeah, uh, awesome. I've got a couple of potential locations. Um, yeah, we'll have news on that in the next couple of weeks. Perfect. I'm mean, talking to this at the gaffers maybe now. Look at that. Oh, what, what is that? Homemade paella. Oh, decent. That's Look at the muscles. The food looks all right as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's listen. It's boxing, pal. <laughs> Podcast Thursdays. <laughs> it's been a pleasure as always, boys. I will Love see you boys. next week. Over and out. Over and out. Nice,